we're three siblings. There's my older brother, Gian, who's one year older, and my younger sister, Mika, who's three years younger than me. You can imagine me, I was the, probably the nerdiest nerd, geek, and the most unathletic person. Um, I really love to study, read books as a kid. So I wouldn't like to play sports because I would fall a lot, I would sweat a lot, so it was not really enticing for me as a kid. <laughs> if you ask myself, when I was younger, if I played basketball, I would laugh. Like, even my parents would laugh. Everybody, everybody would know me would laugh. Um, um, going, growing up, I actually had a fondness for math and science subjects. I, I felt I excelled in them good enough to say that, okay, I think I want to take this in college. I actually was envisioning myself being an engineer, lawyer, uh, not lawyer, engineer, maybe accountant, or even just a business owner. I think as a kid, my dream job was becoming a Lego engineer. Um, so when I went to Ateneo, we were, we were looking through the courses. Me and my parents wanted a math and science related course, but we didn't want to quote a course because we didn't want to kill myself with the quota course and playing at the same time. So that really left the two courses, which was environmental science or management of applied chemistry. But we felt that the problem with environmental science that was you'd have field work, you'd really be out of town for a few days. And that I felt that I wouldn't be able to commit to both basketball and that. So that's why I felt Mac was the best option. I think at a very young age, I don't remember when I started playing, was because when my brother needed someone to play with him, he wanted to play, so he, could, he didn't have any neighbors that really played a lot. So he would always drag me along to play. Even though I hated play, I always wanted to stay at home and just sit on the sofa, watch TV, sleep. Um, you could probably imagine the laziest bum on weekends, then he would, he would drag me to play basketball with him in the park. I think at grade three, that's around nine years old, that's when I, when I first tried out with my brother. The only reason why I tried out my brother tried out and my best friend tried out. So I was like, okay, I will try out for the sake of it. But uh, that's when it started. Then as there were times I actually wanted to quit back then because I wasn't really good. I was unathletic, so I couldn't keep up with my teammates in running. I was weak. So I really didn't like the game because I said, why waste my time playing if I can just focus on my studies and get better grades? Because at that time, also, my grades were dipping as well, which were not, not really to the point where you'd be concerned, but just that you'd, you'd see the noticeable dip, dip in it. Then it was really when my parents pushed me, my brother pushed me, when I got to high school where I really said, okay, maybe I have a chance to make it to college. I learned to love the game. Um, I think that was the one thing I struggled to do as a, as a child, child was because I was being pushed a lot that I didn't see that I would love the game because I didn't see the perks of the game. I didn't see the fun of the game. Like, I saw the fun of the game with my friends, but not something professionally or something bigger beyond just playing at the lunchtime or the special time. So I think that's what I had to learn to be able to push myself. Because if you don't love what you're doing, it's hard to, it's hard to see yourself doing it and waste going through hours of training, hours, because you have three hour practices, and not only that, you have weights, you have extra work also, that if you don't love what you're doing, it's, it's hard to see yourself doing that. It's hard to see yourself giving yourself up for something that you don't love. Um, I think what helped me in my transition with Savior was that at least I, they were giving me, they gave me opportunity to play. Um, they helped me groom myself, they helped me fix my basic skills. Then when I transitioned to college, um, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to come to a program where they had a lot of big men prospects, Greg, Graba, Justin, Frank, to just name a few, that have been passed already. So, they've been able to teach me what they've, they've learned and what they've taught, they've taught these guys back then. So it helped me transition as well to college. Um, I think back in high school, I would have a mid-range jumper. But then when I went to college, it wasn't really something we were looking at because mid-range, as, as they now know, mid-range is one of the least efficient jump shots in the game. Um, but Coach, because Coach Stab really said, we want to develop each one of you to be the best players you can possibly be. And one of that for bigs was that to improve our outside shooting, especially since the game has changed, the game has evolved, and that he felt that this, this, adding this arsenal to us wouldn't hurt. And worst comes to worst, it's not something that you can just pull out on occasion and that at least you can say we have, you've, become, you've become a better player. For playing time wasn't really a concern for me. It wasn't really this hard. As long as we won and you see my teammates actually following it, it would, I would, you would have no questions about me. All players want playing time. No, no player wants to come in and say, I'll, I'll ride the bench, let, let, I'll, I'll just enjoy. Um, everybody wants to play. But then you have to understand that coach only has 200 minutes to allocate for everybody. And that trying to get in the 12, 13, 14, 15 guys hard. Of course, there were times where I felt like maybe coach could have played me here and there. But 
I trusted my coach, Coach Bo and Coach Tab. You trust they know what they're doing. They trust that their, every decision they're making is the best for the team. And so even though they don't play me, I understood that maybe they felt I wasn't ready. Maybe that in that situation, I wouldn't be the best player on the floor. I think the one major injury I had was my dislocated shoulder in my first year in college, two weeks before we, uh, the weekend before we we're gonna leave in the States. Um, in, a, in a drill, it just came out. I couldn't put it back. Um, so then they had Mom Luis, our PT, and Coach Andre, our strengthening coach, had to put it back for me. And that's when I realized I think I might need surgery. That maybe we need surgery for this because we can't let this in issue linger um, for long because it may hinder me as a growth as a player. I missed my whole rookie year that year. I then started of this. It was around June, I think June. Summertime where I got my injury, um, so I was sidelined for around six months. Basically, they weren't really rushing me because there was no pressure. They said that there was no way, in, there was no way that I would make it back in time, even though I had surgery early. They said, "Okay, just take your time. We're not gonna rush you. Um, we'll go at your own pace." Um, and I think that's what the, one of the benefits I had now, because I understood the rehab process. Um, I understood that they were taking it light on me. Sometimes I see other players; they're trying to rush it because they want to get back on the court. Then that's what I tell them: that don't rush it because. There's no point in rushing. What's the point if you rush? Take your time, make sure it's the best that it can be, and then come back. It would be my family and my brother, because when you see, like I remember as a kid, my parents would always be there because they're working. We wouldn't have a lot of time together. Um, but then I understood that they, they worked hard to be able to send me to a good school. Because I, people think that we're more well off as they think I am because Oh, he came from Savior. But then what they didn't realize was that my parents actually invested more to my to, in my siblings' education because they knew that that was a foundation for a better future and to help us develop into better people. The only reason why I, number, I wear number 11 in college was because of my brother. Because back in high school, he would wear 11 and I would wear 7. But then when I entered college, Mike was also going to wear 7 so that, so that he could have his number. And I decided to wear the 11 to honor my brother. Um, because it was my brother's dream to actually play in the UAP. It was his dream to make it big in basketball. And now maybe this is my way of saying thank you to him for helping me get here. And also, in a way, he's with me on the court when he sees me play. There are a lot of people to look up who came from Xavier. I think Chris, because being the model student, graduating ME with, minor, with a minor in finance and Chinese studies, and then played in Ateneo. And like, I think he was the poster boy. Like, everybody wanted to be like Chris. So if like, be like Mike, be like Chris instead. Um, I think Chris was, was, was the one I really looked up to back then. In, in the Philippines, my idol is Daniel Defonso, the demolition man. Um, I remember, I really didn't watch PBA growing up, so it was as of late when he was already in Maralco and Pierre Petron back then, when I saw him, oh my, I was like, oh my god. He's just destroying everybody who's on him. Like, even though he, he was old, he was already considerably old at that time, and he was still producing, he was still getting the young guys, teaching them lessons. And for the NBA, I have Dirk and Tim Duncan, because both guys who aren't really too athletic, who really use their IQ, their skill, to really allow them to excel in the game, where you see athletic big men today, like DeAndre Jordan, Dwight Howard, who are really Hassan Whiteside, who are able to dominate the game today, but they were able to do it. I think there is an opportunity for me to play basketball, especially in the PBA. Um, I see that now, especially from where I am now, but I feel that I'm not yet ready. I think I still have to work on a lot of things for, be, for me to be able to be an established name in the PBA. But then, aside from that, you realize that the PBA can only, your basketball career will only last you for so long. I think you're, lo you're lucky if you can play up to your 35, 10 years in the league. So we understand that basketball can get you far, but can only get you to a certain point. That's why I see myself maybe opening up a business to help me support my family after. Or maybe, hope, maybe even going corporate, hopefully. I, really, I haven't decided on that yet. I have to wait and see how it goes and see where I feel in that time. Athlet I think the first thing still is athleticism. I'm still not fast enough, still not strong enough. Um, I think you can see noticeably that Ben and Bala was throwing me around. A lot, of the imp a lot of the foreigners, foreign students were able to push me around. I think that's still the number one thing I have to improve on. I can still be faster, stronger. Um, I think the second thing also be anticipating plays more. Um, Coach Tab said, that is still a, a thing I can do. He sees me being able to do, but I still lack. Is that seeing the play develop ahead of time, being able to see the next, like in, if, if, if you were to describe it in chess, um, 
he thinks right now I think I can see two moves ahead, but he he feels that I can see maybe five, ten moves ahead of my opponent and see what and hopefully disrupt it and help become a better player.